All right, I got both back springs and blades set up on the surface grinder. Uh, made sure that uh, the parts that are contacting the table are deburred uh, so that they're not uh, sitting uh, any more off of flat as they uh, need to be. And uh, I think they pretty much maintain their straightness uh, throughout the heat treat process. So uh, hopefully they'll grind pretty evenly. But uh, we'll go ahead and start with the nail mix side. Uh, take a couple minimal passes off of that. Uh, at least until the point that the tangs are clean and flat. And uh, then we'll go ahead and flip over and repeat uh, for the back side. And uh, if we got a little bit of scale still on the tip or uh, in the middle of it somewhere, I'm not as worried about that. We'll kind of see how they grind. Uh, but obviously a lot of that will still be removed when we bevel the flats and uh, start putting the knife together. So uh, I got them on the table. I'll go ahead and set the grinder up, uh, touch it off, and then uh, start the process. And uh, I may try to move the camera here once we get going so you guys can see a little better. Right now we're just taking some rough passes, trying to get the very high spots off. go ahead and shut the camera off, uh, get this a little farther, and then I'll resume filming. Alright, I've pretty well surfaced both sides with a 120 grit belt. Uh, you can probably see it's still a pretty rough surface, so I'm going to switch to a Trizac belt. Uh, that's quite a bit finer than this, and uh, go ahead and try to get basically the finished uh, final polish as far as the tangs are concerned. Uh, obviously we still need to grind our flats and uh, take a little bit more metal off at the belt grinder. But uh, this will at least make sure everything's flat and parallel and uh, at that point we can kind of start roughing everything in to start trial assembly. So uh, let me go ahead and set up for that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and finish surfacing these uh, to a pretty decent polish and uh, then we'll resume filming. 
All right, guys, we're pretty much done with our surface grinding so that everything's nice and flat and parallel and has a relatively decent polish on it. So uh, right now our tangs are pretty much what they're going to be for the assembled and the finished knife uh, as far as this polish and the flatness is concerned. Uh, now I do still need to take a little bit of material away from the kick uh, when I start assembly as well as the bottom of the tang. And uh, we'll start dialing that in after a while. But uh, as I said, uh, things are pretty much uh, where they're going to be as far as the finished thickness uh, of the back spring and the tang. Uh, now these ended up at about 60 to 62 thousandths, uh, maybe 63 thousandths thick, uh, which I think is acceptable when you're starting out with about 70 thousandths thick stock uh, after you remove the heat treat scale and uh, get things flattened up and paralleled. So uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, one of these I did have to grind just a little thinner because the corner of the back spring uh, wasn't really flat to begin with, so I had to take a little bit more material away uh, to get a nice flat surface. But uh, you can see now, uh, hopefully, when I uh, drill this bottom center hole and line everything up, I'm actually going to have uh, just a nice natural forward cant of the spring. Uh, that is why we kind of set things up the way we did initially when I was drawing out the templates and I intentionally kicked the spring back uh, about a sixteenth of an inch or so. Uh, that's so that when I got to this point and lined all my holes up uh, and centered this hole up down here that my spring would be naturally forward. Uh, and that's where we're going to get our tension from. Uh, now a lot of makers uh, kind of wait until the assembly uh, to set their spring tension. And I'll kind of give you an example with this template. Uh, they would cut everything out like so. Uh, and then when it came time to set the tension, they just go ahead and rotate that forward. Uh, maybe a sixteenth or three thirty seconds of an inch. And then drill the holes through both the spring and the liner or the handle scale. Uh, that's an acceptable and certainly a great way to do that, uh, but personally I like to do it the other way, especially when starting off with a fairly thin backspring like this. Because uh, as you can see, uh, once you remove just that much more off the back after moving it, uh, you really don't have a whole lot left to uh, drill a centered hole uh, down at the bottom. Not that the hole needs to be centered, it can certainly go on the back corner. Uh, you can even put a lanyard tube in there to kind of hold it. And uh, you can even add just a little bit more material to the template itself on the front. But uh, it's really six of one, half a dozen of the other. Uh, I think either method works well. And uh, the way I did it is just the way I'm used to doing it. So uh, what we're going to do now, uh, we can go ahead and grab our uh, template again. Go ahead and overlay it. Get our center hole down here, make sure we're lining it up, line it up uh, with the hole we've already drilled so that everything's going to fit together. And uh, then once that's done, we can actually take the springs and draw the temper back a little bit more with a hand torch. So uh, let me go get set up on the drill press, and uh, after that we'll temper our springs for the final time. 